Hello and welcome to tutorial 6 from series 2 of the Game Guru tutorial series. In this video and the subsequent videos I want to cover importing custom objects into Game Guru and that includes um, exporting from a tool, I'm going to use Blender in this case, and um, importing the, out, the files produced in that process to have a functional model within Game Guru. What I'm going to cover today is the actual import process itself um, to better explain how that works before moving on to the export process from Blender. Um, now that might seem back to front but I find this way it helps us start at the end and work your way back um, for me personally. Now here is a file that is from an old FPS creator model pack. Um, this has been adapted to using Game Guru insofar as it is now an FBX file whereas originally it was an X file. I've also created five texture maps, um, the ambient occlusion, colour, gloss, metalness and normal. And these five maps are required by the PBR shaders to create a nice looking PBR model. Now, I find it useful. Now, depending on the source of the FBX file, um, it could either have been created by yourself or a friend or downloaded from an online resource. It's a good idea to check the integrity of the model before commencing the import process. Obviously, if you've made it yourself, you know that the model is good. Uh, but if you've got it from a friend or something, you need to make sure that the model is a valid model before you try the import process. Um, there's two ways to do this. The first thing is a tool called FBX Review. Now, this file can load FBX files untextured, and then you can have a look at them in a 3D setting. Now this is obviously not corrupted, it's a fine looking file, it's a fine looking object and we know that this works. The second way to check, or another way to check, is Blender itself. Now this is Blender 2.8 which is the latest incarnation of Blender and my tool of choice. Now if you go up to File and Import FBX and select the FBX from the appropriate folder and open or import it will load up into Blender and it should be exactly as it looks like um, so there's no missing faces there's no deformations of the mesh there's nothing bad about it this is a fine model so we know that that FBX file works um, the texture maps themselves are standard PNGs ideally this should be DDS for efficiency purposes, but PNG will do for testing purposes. Um, so it's just to get it in, to do the import process. I will later be using DDS for the final, um, final part of this series. So, without further ado, if you go to File in the top menu bar and select Import Model, you'll be presented with um, a pop-up, a dialog box. Now I have these files in my user directory on Blender Imp. So I have my FBX file and my five texture files in the same directory. Um, that's not essential as you can navigate. I'll show you shortly, but you can navigate to them in different directories, but I keep them in the same directory for simplicity's purposes. So the FBX file open. Now Game Guru will load this FBX file convert it to a DBO file, which is the native standard of Game Guru, and believe it or not, it is here. You just can't see it because it has no texture information assigned to it. Um, this big guy in red is a height guide. It can be turned off at the bottom, toggle. Now this is just to give you an idea of the scale of the model because um, this box could have been the size of a matchbox or the size of an elephant. Um, this can be edited later, but this is to give you a guide as to how big it's going to be once it's saved. Now, for texture information, there's a grey box in the top left corner of the screen, and it will tell you at the bottom, in text, what that is pointing at. Now, there isn't a material called material underscore underscore three underscore colour, so if you left click this grey box, we have another dialog box where we can select the actual texture itself. Now, there's five textures here, we can only select one. You need to select the colour version of the texture. Game Guru 
will intelligently determine the other four texture maps based upon the name of the file before the underscore. So you select create a underscore color, it will automatically assign create a underscore AR gloss metalness normal um, on its own. So we just need to select the color version. So click and open or double click. It will load that texture and apply it to the model. Now we can see it. Now we can see it's still a little bit small. So we can use this red slider up here to change the scale of the model. And I'll have it about just under waist high. Now under the red slider bar is a box which says shader. That's your default PBR shader for all static objects. Most of the time, this doesn't need to be touched. Um, the only time you need to really change a shader is if you're developing a very more complicated model, which maybe animates. Um, in which case, that's beyond the beyond the realm of this tutorial series. Because if you can do that, you're um, you're, you're well on your way to master it. The only other two things that tend to be changed is collision mode, where you can select box and polygon and no collision. Um, as the name implies, box is a simple box which, um, which bounds the object, which gives you a faster collision, um, but it's less accurate. And polygon, which uses the mesh itself to determine collision. So on a very, very, very complicated model, this will be very expensive to have. So you have to use your best judgment. And in this case, there's no competition. It's a box. It's a box, so it's going to have a box. The second option which needs to be considered is material. Now, material affects quite a lot, um, not only the decals, um, which happen when you shoot the model, and you have three standard options, stone, metal, and wood, and a generic. Um, in my personal experience, if a model is mostly of a material, such as metal, then you should choose that. But if it's a mixed material model, such as like a chair with like, um, a metal frame, a padded seat, you better off picking generic, otherwise you're going to have incorrect sparks coming from the player hits it in the wrong place. But this is a metal box, it's all metal, so I'm going to select metal. Um, other than that, I need to change nothing else here. Um, word of note, all these informations can be changed in the FPE file, which will be generated during this process, and I will show you that shortly. But for now, we click Save Entity and then choose a folder to save it in. I'm going to put it in the same folder as my source files. I'm going to call it um, New Crate. If I can spell it right, New Crate 1. And save. And it will save that. It will generate a DBO file. It will generate a bitmap file for the thumbnail and it will generate an FPE file to hold the information about the model. Now, if we go to Add New Entity, um, scroll down to User, which is where we saved it, Blender Imp, and those are great. We can select it and OK, or double click, and it will appear in our world. Fully textured, our model is now a Game Guru object. Now, we can further um, check the integrity of this model by hitting Test Game. Now, in the game, um, you don't have to do this by any means, but it's always a good idea just to, especially when you're starting the import process, to make sure it's worked correctly as you intended. In the test game, if you press F11 twice, quickly, tap tap, and then press 1 and hold it down, you get to see the albedo, which is the, the colour map applied to the model with no other maps applied to it. Press number 2, and you get the normal map with no other maps applied. Number three is metalness. Number four is gloss. And number five is ambient occlusion. Now you can do this to make sure that each individual texture map has been correctly applied to your model. Um, it's a very good way to make sure it works properly. And it's also a good way to test if something isn't working properly, if there's a problem with the textures. Now that's a nice little um, a double checking feature that I use quite a lot just to make sure and it has come in handy several times. Now, if you press escape, one final thing I'm going to show you in this short video is the um, new files that have been created. The bitmap file 
is the thumbnail that you see in the left hand side toolbar. The DBO file is the 3D model that is inside Game Guru. Um, now this would be used every time you make new um, instances of the crate. And the FPE file, as I said before, contains all the information that the model uses to exist in the world. If we double click on this, it should open in Notepad or Notepad++ if you specified. You see some basic information. Desk or description, new crate one. That's what I called the crate when I saved it from the object importer. Visual information, textured, crate underscore color dot png. This is the um, texture file that I specified when selecting its texture. Underneath this, you see texture F1 through F5, which is color, null, metal, gloss, and AO. Those are the five PBI textures that have been applied to the model to be at use of the effect of the shader. So this kind of tells you what it's called, what it looks like, what shader it's using. And down here, model, is the name of the model that it uses when you create a new instance of the object in the world. Those are your main information about the model itself. Everything else is kind of behind the scenes things. So for example, scale. We increase the size of the box in the importer and that's now a numerical value, scale 174. We could change this number to say 50 and it will be a tiny, tiny box, um, much smaller. If we could change it to 500, it will be huge, a huge box. Collision mode is the, um, when you selected box or polygon, um, that's represented by a numerical value, zero and one, and so on and so forth. Default static is if it's a static entity. If it's not a static entity, it's a dynamic entity. Um, that does make a difference, which is like um, if it's affected by physics or scripts or gravity or phys uh, physical forces, things like that. A material index is um, the metal, stone, wood thing, uh, two being metal, um, as it was in the list. Everything else we can pretty much skirt over today because it doesn't apply to this particular model or this particular process. If the model had animations, you'd have information here under animation. Um, and if it had physical forces, like so strength, or identity details, its character has weapon, none of these apply to a crate. So we can close that down. And on that, I will end this video. And next time, I'm going to look at Blender more to create FBXs that can be successfully imported into Game Guru and unwrapping those and texturing those. Um, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time.